Hey, it's Candice, and in today's QuickBooks Tips and Tricks, we are on the fourth video in our series. So if you haven't heard, my tips and tricks have changed up. Usually, um, a lot of my tips and tricks were just technical. And now they're still technical, but they're a lot more about mindset. Why are you doing what you're doing? So today, we're getting deeper into the banking center, and we are talking about how to enter your expenses in. So in the very, very first video, we talked about navigation. And I explained to you that in the vendor center, you can enter a bill and pay a bill, but it's a two-step process and most entrepreneurs just don't even have enough time for that so instead I'm gonna teach you how to go into the banking center and use the right checks and the check register to enter your expenses in quickly and easily now if you wonder like what's the difference you may wonder this later between right checks and the check register the biggest difference is is right checks looks like a check that you get from your bank and a check register is the register that you had from your bank where you write, you know, it was like line by line, you know, how, what was the date, what was the check number, who did I pay it to, what was the dollar amount, and then what's the balance. That's the register. So the right checks looks like a check, and the check register looks like a check register. It sounds kind of funny, but it is what it is. So let's jump in. Be patient with yourself. That's what I feel like telling you today. You know, we're halfway. This is the fourth video, so this is halfway through the series. Be patient with yourself. The process of learning QuickBooks or anything in life takes time. And if you're way behind, you know, it's end of the year and you still haven't entered any of 15, just be patient with yourself. You'll get there. You have a little more time before your taxes are due. So just take the time to learn this because if you learn it and you get it set up properly, when you go in to use it, it'll be a way easier process to go in and enter things because you know why you're doing it. So come look over my shoulder and I'll teach you how to use the banking center, write checks and the check register. All right, so in the very beginning, I said grab a piece of paper when we started this training series because vendors are the people that you pay. So I actually wanna click here. This is how you get into the vendor center. Also, I haven't taught you a lot during this video series because I don't want it to be too long or too complicated, but up here is the exact same thing as clicking here, just so you know, if you wondered. So these are the places that we in QuickBooks have said we spent money. So at a gas station, Ace, American Express, we added this one, Capital One, Exxon, Home Depot, Office Depot, PayPal, Petty Cash, and the insurance, Square, State Board, that's what I was teaching, Sales Tech. So a lot of these have been when I'm creating videos within my QuickBooks tips and tricks. This is my sample file. So vendors, again, are the places you spend money. You can see that right here very clearly. I'm gonna go ahead and click that little X. So when you're looking at the vendor center, that's what this area is considered, it shows enter bills and pay bills. I'm gonna click on this real quick. I haven't showed you this screen yet. This is what enter bills looks like. You choose where you spent the money, you know, the dollar amount, the invoice number, the date, then the expense category you wanna code it to. After you do that, let me hit clear you come in and you click pay your bills and anything you've entered will show up here and then you go through the process of paying it. Now, this isn't a whole lot of extra work, but it is a two-step process. And as a busy entrepreneur, I know you are busy too, unless you need what's called accounts payable or you need the detail. I will say in my husband's construction business, I only use the inner bills for the places I have accounts where I wanna keep track of the invoice number and for what customer, which job he purchased materials or supplies for. If that is you and you really want to track that and you really want all the detail, you can use that here. You can use it under write checks, but if you have like six or seven, 10 invoices in a month, it gets a little complicated in the write check screen to break it down properly. If that's you, I recommend entering bills, paying bills, but that's not most entrepreneurs. In this example, in today's training, I'm gonna teach you how to go directly in under the banking center, that's this area, and use the right checks. And as I said in the video, the difference between white checks and the check register is exactly what it sounds like. This one looks just like your actual check. You'll see a little check right here. So the top area is the same as pretty much all the things we've been looking at so far. You're gonna pick the account number that you wanna pay it out of. Right here, it lets you know what your balance is within QuickBooks. This may not be your actual bank account balance, so just be conscious of that. 
It's just whatever you have in QuickBooks. It could be negative, it could be positive, just depends where you're at with your data entry. So the next is numbers. And this is where if you write a traditional check, you can actually put the check number in. Most people anymore don't use traditional checks and they get confused on what to do here. All you're gonna do here is you're gonna actually write either online, if you pay an online bill, you can use caps, you can use lowercase, you can type in here EFT, you can do it with caps, you can type in ATM, whatever you feel like typing. And honestly, you can leave it blank. The benefit of taking the time to enter that is when you go into then use your reconciliation, you have a little bit more details about what it is. So for this example, I'm actually gonna just type in ATM. And then you, the next section is the date. The date you wanna enter here is the date the transaction happened. Now, if you're working off of your bank statement, you may or may not know the exact date of your transaction. You can use your bank statement date, that's fine. Then you're gonna go down and you're gonna click paid to the order of, and this is gonna be your vendor. So you wanna make sure that if you have customers and vendors, in other words, your customer and the places you spend money are the same, you wanna make sure you differentiate those so that you look here to the left or to the right, you'll see customers and below that you see vendors. So you wanna make sure you're picking a vendor. And in this example, I am gonna pick Sinclair Insurance and I'm gonna put in a dollar amount. So I'm gonna say I paid them $125 and I'm actually instead of typing ATM there, I'm gonna type online. Cause honestly, I do a lot of bill pay personally online through my bank. I don't do that through QuickBooks, I do it directly through my bank. So I'm gonna type online, who, what date I did it, the company and the dollar amount. Then I'm gonna come down here. You can put a memo in if you want. You'll also notice their address automatically pops up because it's been entered in the vendor center. Under expenses, you can choose to break this down into multiple areas if you want. I'm gonna select insurance expense. Now, sometimes people get confused and like, oh, what account do I put there? Whatever you wanna see show up on your profit and loss. So we're gonna pick insurance expense and you'll see expense to the right, $125. And then I'm just gonna pick classes because I have those set up right now. You probably don't have that, so you don't worry about it. And that's as easy as it is to enter in something you paid within QuickBooks. It's that simple. What account, what type, date, who, dollar amount, type of expense, and that's it. If you had multiple expenses that you needed to break out, you can put multiple ones here and then the dollar amount, you just wanna make sure that whatever amount you put to the right, total the full amount of whatever you said the check is. You click save and close and that's it. It's been now recorded in your QuickBooks. So if you go under reports, company and financial, profit and loss standard, and you go out through the 16th, that's the date I just did that, you'll notice now we have our income, our profit and loss is starting to take shape. So we have our income and our expenses, our other income from our refund, our check, I'll click, and then $255 is so far the profitability that the business shows for the, so far in this month. You click this year, you can also go this year to date, but then I have to go to the 16th. You will see all of your income and all of your expenses and the bottom line. And this is where really management tools come into place. So, you know, you may want to break down your different types of insurance, like liability, auto, renters, different, you know, if you are in real estate, you might have liability, like just depending if you are in construction, you might have a breakdown for one called bond so that you can quickly look at it and say, okay, that's how much we spent on the bond this year. But you don't have to. It really depends on what you and your tax professional want to see. But the truth is, I always say, yeah, you want to make this report mainly for yourself. You want your tax professional to be able to understand it. But as I said earlier in the videos that I was creating for you, your tax professional looks at this report maybe once or a couple times a year. I like you to get to the point where you look at this report every month every quarter. The more you look at it and you focus on it, the better your business will run because you'll have the facts you need to make the business decisions. And that's the whole point of this video series. It's what is the mindset? How much money did I make? What are my expenses? Where is it going? You know, looking at this and going, okay, I've spent on insurance this year, $1,800. 
to, and I've made 11,000, like, well, you know, why is that? And, and really doing research. Now, this is a sample file. It's not a, a real business. It's just as I create trainings and things, it's, it's create the profit and loss is created. So this isn't an actual business. It's just a sample, but you can come in here and you can start looking and seeing what's happening in your business. Again, reports, company and financial profit and loss standard. And what we're really focusing today on is your expenses. So all you got to do is get your bank statement every month, if you don't do it before that, and sit down and enter this in. Yes, you can wait till the end of the year, but remember, it gets hard to remember what you paid for. Like if you go to Costco and you use it for personal and business, it becomes hard to be like, what did I buy at Costco? Was that, was that for the Christmas party or was that for the paper I bought or the ink I bought or the whatever you needed. So you really want to make sure you take the time. The sooner you do it to when you chart created the transaction, you know, used your ATM card or paid a bill, the easier it is to remember. So let's go in now and I'm going to show you if you are going to use a check register, what you would do. So you select which account and then it's as easy as picking the date the transaction happened. If this is a check, you can leave the check number. You can type ATM here. You can go on to like Exxon, say if you filled up your car, you can put $45.76. And then you're gonna select fuel as the expense account. You can drop this down and look through them. Just know I had already entered Exxon, so the next time I go to do it, QuickBooks automatically assumes that the expense I wanna use is fuel. If that's not what you want, you can just type right over top of it and say office supplies, but that's not what I need. It is fuel. So I'm going to type that back in. And then all you got to do is click record and you're done. If you want what's called splits, you can click on what's splits and that allows you to track if it was for a customer. It allows you to type in the memo. It allows you to pick a class and you just click record and that's it. That's as simple as it is to enter in your expenses into QuickBooks. And then you can click this if you want to, it's called the one line. And what it does is it puts it all the way across on one line. Some people like that. Some people don't. It's not a judgment. It just is, you know, your preferences. I like it in two lines. So that's what I personally do too. And it lets you know, here's all your expenses. If for any reason you ever need to change it, you can change it directly in here or you can double click on it and it will bring up the transaction and you can go in and make any adjustments. So now when you look at your reports and you look at your profit and loss, and if you expanded it to the end of the month, you're going to see your fuel expense. You're going to see your income, all your expenses, the income we did in the last video, but these are the expenses that we added today. So I hope this video has been beneficial for you. I really want you to say, okay, what do I need? Do I need accounts payable? Most businesses don't. Perfect. I'm either going to use right check or check register, which one do I prefer? You know, go in and use one. If you don't like it, change it to the other one. And if I missed anything and you have any questions, the only thing I can think of that I didn't tell you, which I'll tell you quickly, is if you want to be able to print your checks through QuickBooks, if you type in T to print comes up and then you can come up here and click print, you can mark it to print it later. And then you could do a batch at the end of all your checks. If you can actually click print checks here, and any checks you have in there to be printed will pop up. You want to make sure you have the first check number correct. And then you can just print them directly through your laser printer, which I recommend if you don't already have them. If you ever need checks, I recommend getting the laser checks. I highly recommend getting them from Costco because if you order them from your bank or through Intuit, it's a lot more expensive. They might be slightly nicer, but if you do have a Costco membership, you can order them directly online for a, a, quite a bit of a discount. So check that out. And then you can always take them with you in your purse or give them to your husband or an employee if they need to write a check. And then they have the stub at the bottom that they can write on for you. And then you have your references, reference point. So thank you again. If you enjoyed this tip, feel free to share it and like this video. I will see you guys in the next tip next week. I'm going to teach you about more about the banking center and we're going to get into reconciling. This is vitally important because it's the one way you know that you entered all of your expenses in properly during the year. If you don't do this, 
You could have accidentally forgot to write a check or enter through the check register your income or your expenses, or maybe you did a typo and you accidentally entered it wrong. The only way you'll know that for sure is if you reconcile, and that is what we're gonna cover in the next video. So thank you so far. I hope you've been enjoying this series. If you missed any or you wanna make sure that you get them in your inbox, you can do one of a couple things. You can either check my YouTube channel, they'll all be on there. You can go to my website and check it out on my blog, or you can go to the link below and enter in your information and all of the videos will be emailed to you as they are available. I will talk to you guys again next week. Have an amazing day. Thank you. Be patient with yourself. Don't forget to be patient with yourself. Bye-bye.